never ever have enough time to play at all you know everybody wants to walk in someone else's shoes everyone's forgot who they are we're back with otter creek and rio grande and as mentioned in the last update I went ahead and completed the river and just did it all and gonna show you kind of what I did. I'm not gonna get too deep into it. I, my plan right now is to do some posts on my Facebook page and probably throw up some pictures and some explanation on the YouTube community tab. And if you don't know what that is, if you, if you actually go to my YouTube channel, there's a, a bunch of tabs at the top you know, videos, live, yada, yada, community where, you know, you can post work in progress or similar things like that. So without any further delay, I'm going to get started on the wiring because that's where I'm at and that's what I'm going to do. holes drilled for the feeder drops for everything on these two sheets of plywood and now I'm just kind of getting in my mind exactly where the block detection needs to be because I'm ready you know to solder up the feeders and and get all that going but I want to make 100% sure I know what I want to do concerning block detection now you know, I've mentioned in previous videos that I'm not really terribly interested in, in doing any kind of signaling with lights at all on the railroad because for one, it wouldn't be prototypically accurate. Uh, if I do signaling, it's gonna be with semaphores and that's something that is just in the back of my mind. I like the idea of maybe you know, seeing some simple automation based on block detection of a semaphore. That's really all the reason I'd want to do it. So that being said, I'm trying to make sure that if I want to do that, I've got all the appropriate trackage blocked to make it happen at a later date without trying to reinvent the wheel with my wiring. So the way I'm looking at this at the moment 
is essentially I've got the block from frying pan to Maroon Creek here, which is this lower trackage here. And then another block, which is the high line that is the entire length from frying pan all the way back to the corner over yonder, which I'm nowhere near ready to start, but I gotta, I gotta consider that now to make sure that I'm not having to work underneath the layout. And then I'm gonna have the next block, the third block, which will be coming into here because uh, the yard limits actually, you know, the, the, the isolation is gonna be right here. And I think this is gonna be dark, that little stretch there, which isn't, isn't gonna bother me any. And then the next block begins here uh, and we'll go all the way down to the other end of Maroon Creek. And that will be, you know, the main line block. And then another blockage will come in here, which will be the passing siding. And then everything else doesn't need to be block detected. I think everything else can be dark. Now, that's only four blocks. So that gives me, gives me, that gives me four more blocks that I kind of can work with if I want. And so I'm thinking about going ahead and doing some block detection on all of the spurs. You know, this spur, the, uh, the cattle spur, which is in here. And then I got a less than a carload spur. And then the mine spur down here. And the reason I'm thinking about that is I kind of like the idea, you know, if you occupy a block, maybe there will be some automation uh, just based on that. You know, like maybe the mine starts up, lights come on and, you know, you can look inside while you're dropping off cars or whatever. So, you know, that's where I'm at is making sure I know where I want all my isolation gaps to be uh, because there's, you got to consider that because uh, if you don't, you can end up with a dead spot and I'll show you real quick what I mean by that. So if, if you completely isolate uh, this turnout, you know, on, you know, from this end, you've already got a gap right here. And then, so if you, if you isolate here, none of your electricity can get back on either of these two rails. So effectively, both of these two rails are dead, which can cause you problems. And so in addition to, you know, lighting up both of the outside rails to make sure you've got power, you also have to light up these two in here, which just makes for, you know, a little more uh, thought process because you need twice as many uh, drops as you got. So I've got feeder drops planned for both of these. Where'd the other one go? There it is. In here for the for the for those two rails. So. Now I don't think I'm, I think I'm going to remove these. I might, I might not need this feeder drop for that rail because the second I put in normal rail joiners here, all my problems disappear uh, because everything this way I think is going to be dead. But uh, that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm just, you know, trying to plan ahead with the wiring and making sure that I've got everything I need to do because uh, I got to think about that down there too. If I, if I have this, is dark. I don't need to block detect it. I don't need insulated joiners there. So I don't have to worry about having any dead spots uh, in that short length of track beyond my frog.
wired up and ready to test. And I guess for those of you who are interested or care, you know, I've got, this is kind of the central hub of the, of the bus lines. So this board is where the circuit breakers and the LCC stuff is gonna, gonna be. I haven't built it yet, but I kind of have a real good idea of where everything's gonna go. So the wiring from the circuit breakers are gonna come directly from here to this terminal block. And this area right here is Maroon Creek. So you've got this bus line that goes all the way through and eventually goes all the way through to the end and then we'll go all the way back out to frying pan uh, via that terminal block there. And then this goes to the further east end of Maroon Creek and then this goes this way to the stage yard, staging yard not really a yard, but the, you know, the staging yard for the one train that's gonna come in and, and work Maroon Creek. And then this is the line that's going to Aspen and you can see it branches off and goes this way, which is going, technically it's, it's south on the railroad, uh, but it's going back all the way around to the corner. And then it also is this bus line here, which goes all the way out and then to frying pan. So that's that's the DCC part of it. And all that's pretty simple. Uh, now I can show you, you know, what I've done with the wiring as far as, you know, the track wiring goes and the feeder drops. This is what I call a collector. And you know, all I'm doing is bringing in all the blues that are, I guess you'd say regional to this location into one central point where I can solder them all onto the wire at one time. And then the same thing with the white wire. A pretty simple concept rather than trying to, to cut and splice or put on suitcase connectors in a bunch of different places on the bus. I'm just limiting it, limiting it to one location. Uh, now the LCC part, you know, you can see I've got my tortoise adapter boards here on all my tortoises and the ribbon cable. It's all set up and ready to go. And you know what I use for, you know, kind of hold that ribbon cable. It's uh, these things, which I think are designed for actual wiring, home wiring. I just remove the, the aluminum nail and use number four half inch screws and that works really well for the ribbon cable. And now there is one thing over here I'm doing just a little bit different. I'll discuss it in brief. This is the Model Railroad Control Systems MP1. I think that's who makes it, Model Railroad Control Systems. And it's extremely low profile. And the reason I went with it was because this area right through here happens to be right on top of one of my L girders. And a tortoise just wasn't gonna work, so I went with this. And I've tested it, it does work with the LCC. I had to do something slightly different with how I got here with it. I'm using a, a breakout board, a screw terminal breakout board. So I'm still coming in and I made sure that this was the last on, you know, there's two 10, 10 circuit plugs that you make use of. And I made sure that this is the last in the line. I don't know if that was, if it made a difference or not, but uh, you know, you've got two wires to go into all of these tortoises and I'm just using the, the last two associated with this and it will actually be line four inside the node when I actually go to configure it.
and I have no idea whether it's going to work or not yet. There's, there's about, if I remember right, it's a, I don't know if it's six or a seven millimeter throw, and then you can adjust this within the larger throw. Uh, you can't massage this back and forth though. So I won't really know what I've got until I get it all powered up and see how it works. Right now, all of the slack is this way, uh, holding the point closed. And I think it's being held closed right where I don't want it to be, but I can't work it back the other way until I put some power to it. Well, the last LCC thing I've got going on on, on this particular chunk of plywood, which I've, I've taken to call module one. There's, there's four modules associated with uh, Maroon Creek. This is module one. The other one at the other end is module two, and then three and four, three and four are uh, what's going uh, further east. But uh, this is block one. This is what's taking care of everything to frying pan. All that will be one block and it will be double gapped down here on this end. And then this one is block three, which is directly associated with the spur going to, I think is gonna be a grain elevator. It'll either be a grain elevator or the oil. It just kind of depends on the structures when I get them built as to what will work there. Those wires will come and connect here. And I've got, got these labeled blocks one, two, three, all the way through eight. And I've also got the colors because I've got uh, blue, orange, brown, green. And that's the first plug and in the second plug because you have to have two plugs uh, will be again blue orange green brown green you just kind of have to know exactly what you're doing but those wires will connect in here so that I'm not you know got wires running everywhere to begin with and that the block occupancy detector board will be also on this piece of plywood here and you can see the wires that will come to here are just spooled up right there, ready to go. They're cut to length. I just need to make them come through here nice and neat once everything's in place. So that's kind of in a nutshell what I've done. And I think uh, I'm ready to turn it over at the moment and, and check for shorts and see if it's all gonna run like I hope it does.
Believe it or not, I had no shorts and all of the frog wires were the correct polarity. So it worked out probably the best I've ever had as far as that goes with uh, everything else I've done to this point. So everything's in place with module one and module two. And I haven't done anything over here yet, you know, other than just, you know, put in this track uh, without the isolation gap just to make sure everything works. So I don't think I'm gonna mess with any of the spline until I'm finished with modules three and four. So I guess that's where I'm at. And I'm relatively certain that before I begin on module three here, I need to do some serious thinking about what's gonna go on with the backdrop, because I'm pretty sure it's gonna have to be either elevated higher than the plywood, or it's gonna have to be quite a bit taller than maybe I'd want it to be. So I've got to make some decisions there because I want to do that before I remove this because I think now would be the time to do it. And last but not least, I think before I even do that, I need to go ahead and finish, you know, that run from the corner of the door into here, the staging track for Maroon Creek. So there you go. Uh, Pretty big accomplishment as far as I'm concerned. I feel good about it. Everything nice and clean and working well. So I don't know what the next video will be, whether it'll be backdrop stuff or, or what, but stay tuned and thanks for watching Otter Creek and Rio Grande and we will see you next time.